Pat, congratulations, mate. Thank you, Paul. So we've got uh, our agreement with Collins over the line. Pretty hard not to be excited about that, Paul. As you know, it's been a long time coming, but uh, very exciting. So just tell us, who are they? So Collins Aerospace, uh, well, firstly, they're a great organisation for us to work with. They're a, a great uh, mechanism as a pathway for us, but they're the largest tier one avionics provider in the world. And the nice thing uh, with Collins is that they, they work in the commercial space and the military space. They do a lot of work in um, both aftermarket and production. And each of the areas that we've worked in for the last five, six or eight years are really their key specialty areas, commercial aviation, uh, military aviation, business jets, rotary wing, um, space, and also into airports. So all of the, the work that we've done to date actually aligns very well with them. And they're actually owned um, by a significant player, um, uh, Raytheon Technologies, who um, are a $130 billion market cap organisation and a, and a clear aviation prime. Um, so I think, I think we're in pretty good company. Well, that's fantastic. Um, it seems like we're boxing above our weight again, doesn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Well Exciting. done. Thank well you. Well done. So, so it has taken us a while. Um, tell us a little bit about what's, what, what it's all about. What, what kind of agreement do we have? Tell, tell us the, the key components. Uh, look, it's, it's, um, it, it, the, the key part of the engagement is that we will uh, provide exclusive licence to, to Collins Aerospace. Um, but I think what it, what it really does is it enables both parties to do what they're the best in the world at. So seeing machines will, will, will play our part in, in understanding the human in this, um, in this environment, and that'll be either a pilot or the crew or, or operators. So we'll, we'll develop that pathway. Initially, it'll be into fatigue and then through to, you know, obviously we'll grow that capability. But working with Collins Aerospace, their specialty is in the part that we would never have built at Seeing Machines. Certification, regulation, deploying this technology across all of those streams that I mentioned before. Um, but building aircraft parts, it's, I'm, I'm fairly sure we've agreed a few times that Seeing Machines was never going to be building aircraft parts. So we get to do the bit we're best in the world at and work with them to actually deploy that. Yeah, we, we have agreed that a few times. We, we, have we also had agreed that, that we'd, we'd only move forward with a significant relationship with a tier one avionics supplier. So, yeah. so well done. And I think, Paul, it's not, only, it's not only significant in terms of their size, but I think you know, we've, we've had a lot of meetings with them over the last long time. Um, I think we signed the collaboration agreement in November 21. But what I've really learnt as we brought our teams together is there's a nice, um, obviously they're massive and, and, and we're growing, but um, there's a really nice cultural alignment as well with their technology, um, their engineers, how they go about things. Um, and I just see that they, they're smart enough to know that this capability is going to end up in every simulator and into every aircraft. We've been told that for quite a long time by a lot of key stakeholders. We've now got a mechanism to do that. Fantastic. So let's talk about uh, breaking down the deal a little bit. Okay. So you've mentioned exclusive. I assume that uh, we've also got uh, a, a long run uh, program for engineering services for each of the each of the opportunities that emerges. And of course, there'll be uh, licensing revenue that flows e each time we we move our technology in, in into a, a built environment. But just just give us a, a headline on the deal. Sure. So the exclusivity. Um deal or contract, exclusive IP is, is, a, is a $10 million contract um, or a $10 million engagement. Uh, $3 million of that will be, uh, will be up front um, on signature. Um, and, then the, but the nice, and then there'll be a range of performance metrics around, around the remaining part of that. But the key thing here is that's to actually get started. That, that's to get us on the, on the playing field. Um, our first uh, engagement starting on the 1st of July will be the Generational One product that we jointly build. Um, heavily focused on fatigue risk management um, and, and we're going to point that at some current RFQs that, that are in play and typically that'll be in the commercial uh, uh, aviation space and in the aftermarket world. Into aircraft that already exist where there is some significant problems in relation to fatigue um, and Collins really see that working with us building that generational one product will support that outcome. So we've got the world's largest and arguably best 
player in, in this environment. Yeah. Uh, we've got an exclusive collaboration agreement with them to cover really every area that our technology can be deployed in. Yeah. Um, I think it's fair to say that we've brought to the table uh, a whole range of opportunities so that you've personally been working on for <laughs> a long time. Yes. Um, so we've got a, an agreement in place. We've got a pipeline of opportunity. Um, so what happens from here? How do you see that rolling out? I think, I think we get to... Um I think we get to do the bit that we've really wanted to do is, you know, for a long time, and you know, as, as we both have spoken about a lot, our engagements have been ones or twos. We've done data collection in aircraft, we've done a lot of work in the, sim in the simulation uh, and yes. training space where we're quite mature. But we've now got that mechanism that we just spoke through in terms of each of the different streams. It gives us scope and it gives us scale. Um, so what we do now is we build a generational one product and then we work with, with Collins to point that at everything they do across the aviation industry. So I think it really, it, it turns a lot of effort and energy and pipeline. I mean, it's interesting you use the term. I think we're not only bringing technology to this, we're also bringing a pipeline that we've, we've been working with for a long time. Mm. Um, but it is going to be so nice to be having, hopefully as, as, as things progress, having conversations not about putting this into one aircraft or to one simulator, but how we actually deploy that across this industry. Yeah. That's the game changer. Yeah, look, I, I, I really think it is. Um, now, we've been working with uh, a lot of airlines uh, and other uh, tier one avionics uh, suppliers. Um, how do you think this will fit with the relationships that we've built over the last few years? Yeah, look, I think it's going to be an interesting play. We, we, um, Collins have been fantastic in the conversation and they know who we're currently working with and, and where some of the relationships and, and engagements are at. So where it's relevant and suitable, we would look to transfer those engagements. Um, but at the same time, they have no intention to stop any of our existing contracts. And in fact, they'd, they'd really like to support them to make sure that they actually continue to build capability and, and signals and features that are relevant to the industry. Mm. The conversations that we've had have always been around, you know, we're, we're building this market, so it's quite immature. So even though we are going to be obviously in this exclusive relationship with one organisation, we get this pathway to actually really start this properly. So mm. because it's immature, I, I actually think it's the best opportunity for us to really grow because mm. we're growing from mm. the ground up. Well, let, let's look at one example. Let's take uh, training simulators. Yeah. So you can buy training simulators of several parties. Yeah. Um, and uh, those simulators are in fact uh, populated with technology from Collins quite often. Is that right? That's right. So how do you, you know, do you see that as an advantage? In, in, in yeah, I, I think it's an interesting uh, you know, pathway in relation to that is, you know, I think if you put the technology into aircraft, um, because the simulator has to reflect what happens in the aircraft, then um, it's ultimately going to end up in the simulator. But I think getting back to the, to the core of your question, I, I think it's been very difficult for sea machines to sell technology into aviation. Mm. All of these organisations that we work with, they know how to work with Collins. They, and Collins knows how to sell capability, maintain, support, grow. And I'll always come back to certification and regulation. That was always going to be a super tough one for us. Yeah. But if we're now... Um, a part of working with Collins, working with organisations that know how to contractually and commercially deal with them, again, I think that's why this relationship makes sense from the very start. Fantastic. So, so you know, we're in simulators, as you say, in ones and twos, yeah. but we're in them nonetheless. Yes. Uh, uh, we're in the cockpit, you are. Uh, uh, which is a, a unique uh, win that we posted last year. Yes. And we're also uh, d looking to deploy our technology in into consoles. So how, how would you define the market opportunity here? I mean, what, what does it look like? I, th I think it's, it's really, it's tough to answer. I think when we did our capital markets day in, in New York um, earlier in the year, um, I think we focused our TAM on commercial aircraft and on simulators. And that was circa $720 million that we broke that down into in terms of our part of that relationship. But I used a term before, which I think will possibly redefine what that TAM looks like, and it's scope and scale. I think now, if you look at that list right down from commercial aircraft through military, business jet, rotary wing, space and airports, 
all of a sudden, I think that TAM actually gets bigger. But I think we should, we should you know, stick with our original mechanism because we know the aircraft space quite well. We mm -hmm. know the simulator space quite well. So mm -hmm. I think the size of the opportunity you know, is certainly north of 700 million. And I think if we lead it, you know, I think we can get a very, uh, a very good portion of that. So what, where do you see the opportunity for a fast follower here? I mean, how, how much runway do we have? Oh, that's a that's a great question. I, I, I think um, I think the the runway comes from the fact that who we've worked with for the last four, six, eight, ten years and longer in terms of R and D. Um, but I, I think our technology in in this space hasn't been born from a lab. It's been born from working with these organisations to put our tech into a simulator and actually gather pilot data, um, you know, put our tech into aircraft and, and gather real-time crew data. We, we learn so much. I mean, pilots put checklists in front of the camera and all these sort of things that actually, that I, I think you don't know if you do this work in a, in a lab. Um, how far advanced are we? Oh, I, that's, a, that's a tough question. I, I, I think years. Um, and I think our chosen partner and whoever chose who we can, we can chat about, but um, I, I think we do have a, we have a reasonable moat here. Okay, well, um, we have our third BU. Yeah. Uh, th this uh, really sets that up for, for a, a long and successful future. I mean, Collins think in terms of decades. They do. And uh, we, I know we've struggled with that uh, uh, in, the, yeah. in the early days, but um, I think you couldn't have a better partner. I want to congratulate you again for the deal. Thanks, Paul. Well done. Awesome. Cheers.